thought Mr. Delaney Jenkins Watkins Award alumni. Come on over here. Yeah, you're good. Hello, I'm Jelani Jenkins, former NFL linebacker, founder and CEO of Postseason. I'm excited to introduce you to y'all already. Thanks for having me. Excited to dive deeper into it. I'm just waiting to get this presentation lined up, but played in the NFL five years, um, before with the Miami Dolphins and one year with the Houston Texans and the Raiders and really created this platform in response to what I was going through when I transitioned out of the game, feeling stuck, stagnant, unfulfilled, and feeling like I needed the same level of support that I had when I was playing the game. So, decided to dive deeper into that world. Um, there we go. Bam. All right, cool. Cool, so, yeah, so Postseason is a social learning platform which combines online community and e-learning software really to help athletes off of the field, to support them in all things that they're doing off of the field. And so, really the biggest problem, so really the biggest problem that we run into when we leave the game, elite athletes especially, is we spend most of our time mastering the craft and then all of a sudden it's all over with. And what we face is isolation, we face that loss of support, and it's something that I got, I had to deal with after five years of playing. I felt that isolation, I felt that loss of support, and a lot of athletes are going through that same type of feeling. And so really, a lot of great things are happening in this industry. Athlete empowerment is something that is really becoming bigger and bigger. You see athletes, elite athletes like LeBron James, um, Patrick Mahomes taking more ownership roles in what they're doing. Um, you see them not just taking endorsement deals, but taking ownership. You see that the ed tech industry is an industry that is $404 billion annually by 2025 with a growth rate of 20%. So online learning is becoming bigger and bigger, especially due to the pandemic. You see the personal development industry is also growing. People are looking to develop themselves personally, especially after being alone for so long. And athletes especially are leading really this whole mental health conversation. You saw what's happening in the 2021 Olympics with Simone Biles, Naomi Osaka. You see Michael Phelps talking about mental health. And so what's happening in this industry is a lot of these institutions, collegiately, professional organizations are feeling a whole lot of pressure to add more resources and support to these athletes as they move on into the regular world. And you're seeing this trend happening in a real way. So really the solution is postseason, right? And so what we're doing is we're recreating the support system that exists within elite athlete organizations. So when you walk into a new team as a new athlete, you're gonna get a playbook that's gonna tell you where to go, where to be, what time you need to show up, and how to win, and how to make the plays. You're gonna get access to a locker room with other athletes, other individuals who are looking towards a goal that's exciting, a championship. And you're gonna get coaches that are going to support you through that process and give you feedback to the whole process. So we're looking to really recreate that within this digital platform via online courses, a community hub, or a locker room, and then coaching element, which is a group coaching element, where they're able to have support, ask questions, and have someone actually be able to speak to them through the process. And so we're creating a real strong, collaborative, and community-oriented motivators within our platform. So athletes like competition, we have the ability to create certain incentive, incentivization with tokens and badges to really create more community engagement, um, but also add a whole learning component to it. Uh, we're going to have a we have a digital distribution network, which um, is for athlete development. So within our platform, we're able to bring on coaches, online course creators, industry leaders who have value that they're able to give to those athletes. They're able to have a nice opportunity to speak to our community through workshops, through classes. So we had a, a meditation coach come in um, in our beta version to actually lead them through a meditation. So it's experiential, but it's also learning that workshops, online education, a lot of different aspects. So we have three real sections in the course and in the program. There's the playbooks, 
which are our online courses with additional resources um, that they can do at their own pace. We have the locker room, which is our community hub, uh, to share, to connect your ideas, and really be able to have the opportunity to have people come in and lead them through courses, and workshops, and things. And then we have our meeting room, which is really like office hours. So every course has a coach. A coach, in order to have that course on there, will have a office hours, so two hours a week or maybe a month to be able to set aside time for those athletes who have enrolled in their course to be able to answer any questions or anything that they're doing. We are a social learning platform, so a lot of people might have heard of the 70-20-10 model, but online learning is traditionally done in a lonely, isolating environment. So what postseason is prioritizing is this community element, this experiential learning with additional coaching and support. It's something that as athletes, we learn through experience, through practicing, we learn through being around other athletes and seeing, learning from the vets, and having coaches getting that feedback. So we're really looking to recreate that process in the next phase. So 70% learning and developing through experience, 20% learning and developing through others, and really just that 10% is learning and developing through structured courses and online programs. When you look at the market, there's a whole lot of online learning and education, but now we're not going to experiential and community elements to us. We're really leaning into that because that's what athletes are used to. So our target market, our serious athletes, current and former, what we mean by serious athletes, we're talking collegiate, we're talking professional, we're talking enthusiast, so like your everyday athlete. I'm training for a marathon, there's a lot of marathon trainers out there, they are enthusiasts, okay? There are everyday athletes out here who are doing the work and really consider themselves serious athletes. And so also eSports is another demographic that we're targeting as well. So out of 460,000 collegiate athletes who compete every year, 2% who play professionally, it's a staggering number. So that's 440,000 collegiate athletes and 110 seniors, 110,000 seniors every single year who will not play professionally. Their careers are over with. They're going into a whole new phase. They're dealing with that isolation. They're dealing with that immediate loss of support. Okay, and on average, those who play professionally retire before the age of 30, and trends are moving towards an even earlier retirement. So they're getting younger, they're moving into this phase quicker. Okay? And there are very few resources available to serve those athletes through their transition. Okay, so that's where postseason season comes in. This is really the lay of the land as far as competition. We have some big players like Masterclass who cast a wide net around the, the market. We're a lot more niche. Other than that, Game Plan probably has the biggest stake in the market with the college programs. And what they're doing is completely different from what we're doing. So we really see that we have a nice opportunity to have success in this market. We have a unique user experience relative to our competition. So we have a live social feed within our platform, kind of similar to what you would experience on a Facebook or an Instagram, or we have the opportunity for those athletes to speak to one another really quickly, share messages, um, dive into different events together um, virtually. So we have video presentations, offline content. Um, we have a, a niche market position, like I said. Um, we have community and transformation as priorities rather than uh, just education and isolation. And then we have this group coaching element which adds familiarity and effectiveness. So we are very much so creating that same type of support that we experience in the locker room. Okay, it's a huge market opportunity. So our primary target is going to be collegiate programs and long strategic partnerships with these programs. They're sending out these seniors and athletes every year. And again, a lot of them are not playing professionally or, or going through isolation. So our primary target is collegiate partnerships, huge budgets. The okay, average athletic department budget is Division One, $49 million. Division Two, $6.6. .6, Division Three, $3.4 million. 460,000 student athletes a year. We already talked about this, 110 won't play, 110,000. There's 12,436 plus <laughs> teams. That's all sports across North America. 5% NCAA annual growth rate yearly. 150,000 plus yearly max gross profits per university. And then there's $19 million average budgets per university. So this is a, this is a huge market and it's pretty much untouched compared to what is possible, okay? Our revenue model, we have four main packages. One is the playbook. This is our single 
uh, a person, a member coming in and purchasing a single course, ranging from $199 to $499. This is going at their own pace, so there's no coaching, there's no community element. That's an option. The locker room, some people don't necessarily want the course, but they want to experience the community element and have people coming in, teaching and developing and adding value to them. That is $30 a month, $295 a year. Then we have the champion model, that's full access to the whole platform, that's the locker room, that's all available courses, as well as the group coaching element. That's gonna be our main bread and butter, $85 a month, 850 a year. And then we have the Hall of Fame, which is our premium, that's full access plus one-on-one -on -one coaching. There's going to be a limit, obviously, to that. That's a premium, premium package. That's 920 a month to 10K a year. And so this model is gonna be powered by long-term strategic partnerships with collegiate programs, like you said. Secondary targets include professional athletes, um, sports agencies, professional sports organizations, where you have the option to do partnership programs. We will do partnership programs uh, with online course creators, as well as um, industry leaders, um, different companies to be able to host their online course on our platform for a 30% transaction fee. Okay, and then we also have a larger in-person events once profits increase significantly. We'll be able to host these transformational events, bring members of the community, as well as people who can add value to that community. Okay? Here are our projections for the next five years. So post-funding, post-season is on track to reach $25 million in combined revenue by 2026. Okay, these are the numbers. We feel really good about these numbers based on our, our reach and our ability to get into the room with a lot of these colleges as well as our unique standing within the market. And we feel really good about it. Okay? So here is where we are at now. We are a year and a half into development. Early last year, I created my own online course it's called the Athlete Purpose Playbook. I took a data-driven approach and I interviewed 55 former collegiate and professional athletes, asking them what did they need most, what did they fear most going into the transition, what did they want most, how best could they be helped and served. Interviewed those individuals, ended up taking six athletes through a 10-week online, it wasn't online, it was a 10-week live trial where we took them through that course. They paid the hunt. $1,700 for lifetime access to the platform. They went through the live trials, they gave feedback, testimonials to be able to go into this next phase. I wanted to be able to add a community element to the courses and really create this whole experience, so that was kind of the birth of the idea postseason after taking through that live trial. Um, we partnered with a company called Rebel to help design the platform and get that beta version out. That is available now on the App Store and Google Play. Um, postseason was featured on Forbes a month ago in our soft launch, and so we were able to gain a whole lot of credibility, a whole lot of momentum, and it's been a very beautiful journey. And so, and yeah, we also have secured 30 plus interested partners for locker room experiences as well as potential online course creators on the platform. Here's the team that we have been moving and grooving with. Um, we, we have the director of public relations, we have marketing, we have branding, we have a tech engineer, but we also have a lot of senior leadership with business advisors, Reggie being one of them, and also Jim Neeson, who is also very much so established um, in the world of business. We have sports advisors that we also have on our, on our team. Uh, some of them I played with, Spencer Paysinger, NFL seven years, these are all individuals who have had success after sports and are in different industries and doing really well in their respective industries. And so we feel really good about what we have going into this. And as far as funding, we're in the pre-seed round and what we're looking for is $1 billion uh, via convertible note. Um, we feel really good about that. We have our historical value is 100,000, so we've been over for a year and a half. 100,000 of that was my own personal investment. And for funding, what we're looking to do is really uh, put it into product development, into also staff development, and marketing, sales, and just legal and other things like that. And yeah, last couple of notes, we're a profitable business model, and we are also accepting funding via cryptocurrency. That's what all the cool kids are doing now. 
And then uh, we're also in the process now of exploring different ways to integrate crypto into the platform to be able to empower the athletes within it in an even greater way that we can do the matter. So there's my email address, jdrinkers at postseason.app. To the website, postseason.app. We have an Instagram page, postseason.app. And yeah, I'm excited to dive deeper in conversation with anybody else who wants to learn more about it. Thank you for having me again. Um, any questions here while we're here? We're good to go. Quick question. So yes. tell us about your advisory team and your journey. You know, I'd say the journey from concept and spending your money and yes. putting in the grind. Yes. But I said, you know, it's a new new process. Yes. So tell us about that you did the, the trial. Yeah. But your 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 advisors and the people that you in, in, talk to in that, how did that help you evolve where you got now? Well, they have all, you know, most part, a lot of them have been had sports backgrounds. Um, the two business advisors, Reggie, one being one of them, and Jim Neeson, they also work in sports. Reggie plays sports, so these advisors have really helped to create a profitable business model that actually works in the process. So, like I said, it started off actually taking individuals and selling my own personal course. I felt like we needed to create an element that was more so uh, reminding of what sports represented. I felt like we needed a community element, element and so that's what, that was the birth of postseason. Was able to get and partner with the right people to create the actual platform to make it happen. And the team was able to do it relatively quick, quickly within two months. And just with that mentorship from the advisors and just from having the support around, we were able to put something together that actually made a whole lot of sense. And we feel good about it. We're moving and grooving. Okay? What's your biggest challenge so far? I would say the, the biggest challenge so far is just creating a, an environment where individuals, athletes feel comfortable in going into a place and actually seeing that they need help. So because we haven't fully gone into the collegiate programs yet, the biggest challenge is actually reaching out to people who may not feel as if they need help. It's kind of the, I don't want to say it, but it's kind of the ego of the athlete. I know when I first, <laughs> when I first stopped playing, it took me a really long time to ask for help. It took me, I was a year out of the game. I couldn't watch football on television. I didn't even know that I was really going through it. I just felt like, I was done with it, but I was really had a lot of trauma that I hadn't necessarily dealt with. And I wasn't in the process of going and asking for help. And so reaching out to individuals and showing them that we have this value for you is difficult when you have a lot of individuals who have been put on a pedestal for a long period of time and don't know how to necessarily say, I need help. So there's a, a dynamic there that we've had to overcome. But again, it's building that trust and it's building that credibility and it's building that community-oriented atmosphere the team environment again so where they feel like they can move forward. All right, so tell our, our, our viewers, we had a lot of people from around the country doing um, how they can contact you again, what's the uh, website address or the app address, Yes. and, and uh, how to, your email. So you can contact me personally at Mighty King Jenkins. I'm on Instagram. Um, my email address is jjenkins at postseason.app. The website is postseason.app. Um, and then also Postseason has an Instagram page that we are going to get ready to launch in the next couple of months called Postseason APP. Um, you can reach out to Reggie as well. I'm on LinkedIn, Jelani Jenkins, find me. Um, I'm excited to dive deeper in the conversation with anyone who's interested, anyone who wants to get involved. And before we end, tell them about the Forbes Magazine interview and, and how did that uh, unfold and, yeah. and what was the genesis of that? Yeah. So. Just had finished the, the beta platform and our director of public relations, Hannah Price, she had a couple of different outlets we, she reached out to and just kind of told the story behind this whole thing, how it was something that, a platform that I wish I had available for me when I stopped playing. She reached out to them, they were so impressed. Within 30 minutes they reached back out and said they wanted to do the interview. That next day we had the interview and two days later, the interview came out. The interview came out, and it's been blowing up ever since. <laughs> so it happened relatively quickly, really quickly. Not even relatively. It happened really quickly, and you know we're just excited about the momentum that's happening. The people who want to partner and, and, and be a part of it, and yeah, like I said, we're moving through.
Appreciate you, young man. Thank you. Dynamic Thank you. young man, and you know, we're so honored and proud to be associated with Jelani. I've known him since he was, he was a youngster, <laughs> right? Before uh, all of his accolades, and he had done all, all this tremendous thing. But it's a great project. Looking forward to adding value and uh, reach out, and let's uh, move forward. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate you. My pleasure. All right. Good job. All right. Yeah. <laughs>